Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you. India launches Operation Kaveri to evacuate citizens from conflict hit Sudan. Sindh is in Pakistan to test against CPEC and forced conversion of Hindu girls. And mastermind of Kabul airport attack killed by Taliban, say US officials. And now for all the details, India has intensified evacuation efforts to bring back its citizens stranded in Sudan because of the ongoing conflict. Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murli Dharan, who is overseeing the operations, received multiple batches comprising more than 500 Indian nationals who were airlifted from Sudan to Saudi Arabia's Jeddah. More were expected to be brought later on Wednesday. An Indian naval ship has also been roped in to bring people from port of Sudan towards Jeddah. About 3,000 Indians were estimated to be stranded in Sudan when the conflict broke out between the country's army and paramilitary forces 10 days ago. Days after the Punch terror attack, Pakistan army has issued a fresh threat to India. In a presser, DG ISPR Major General Ahmed Sharif said Pakistan is ready to take on all enemies, including India. The remarks came after Pakistani journalist Hamid Mir claimed former Army Chief Kamar Javed Bajwa admitted to him that Pakistan Army is no match to India and they are in no state to engage in a war with India. However, Sharif negated the claims and said Pakistan Army is prepared to protect its controlled territories. He threatened if India tries any misadventure, Pakistan can even take the war into enemy territory if the need arises. With Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari slated to attend the SCO meet in India next month, the matter is likely to cloud the visit. Moving on, a massive protest rally was held in Sindh on Tuesday against the forced conversion of Hindu girls and forced disappearance of Sindhi activists and the China-Pakistan economic corridor. The protesters also raised anti-Pakistan slogans demanding freedom from illegal occupation. Hundreds of Sindhis held a protest rally in Sand Town of Pakistan's Sindh province on Tuesday to condemn the forced conversion of minority Hindu girls, enforced the disappearance of Sindhi activists and against the China-Pakistan economic corridor. The protesters also raised pro-freedom slogans and demanded Sindhu Desh, a separate homeland for Sindhis. They blamed Pakistan has been exploiting the natural resources under the garb of so-called developmental projects and converting Sindhis into a minority in their own land. The rally was organized by Jia Sindh Freedom Movement on the occasion of 28th death anniversary of Sindhi nationalist leader GM Sayed. There are several socio political organizations in Sindh which advocate for a free Sindh nation, calling Pakistan an occupier. Top U.S. officials on Tuesday said that the Taliban has killed an Islamic State militant who was the mastermind behind a suicide attack at Kabul's International Airport in 2021 that killed 13 U.S. troops and 180 civilians during the United States evacuation from the country. White House spokesperson John Kirby confirmed the development in a statement, but he did not name the militant leader. The bombing occurred on August 26, 2021, as U.S. troops were trying to help Americans and Afghans flee the aftermath of the Taliban's takeover. The relations between the U.S. and the Taliban have deteriorated significantly since they imposed draconian new measures, banning girls from school and excluding women from working for international aid and health agencies. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe told the parliament on Wednesday that the country is trying to reduce its overall debt by $17 billion through restructuring 
as the government is seeking to support of opposition parties for a nearly $3 billion IMF program. Vikram Singh said that the country would discuss debt restructuring with India and the Paris Club of Creditors on one platform and with China separately. Sri Lanka owes $7.1 billion to bilateral creditors, according to government data, with $3 billion owed to China, $2.4 billion to the Paris Club and $1.6 billion to India. Caught in its worst financial crisis since independence from Britain in 1948, the island nation of 22 million people secured an IMF loan last month. Authorities in India's northern Chandigarh city has installed metal sculptures made of waste materials in a park to promote recycling and create awareness among people. The Waste to Wander Park has been opened under the Garbage Free City mission, which is reportedly spread over 1.75 acres of land. It consists of robotic sculptures made of waste products, including pipes, rims, chains, fire extinguishers, alloys from wheels of cars, among other items. Here we are here. अपसाइकलिंग को प्रमोट करते हैं और ये स्क्रैप मेटल पार्ट्स जो कि चंडीगढ़ मुनिसिपल जो चंडीगढ़ मुनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन के पास अवेलेबल है जैसे पुराने पाइप्स पुराने रिम्स पुरानी चेन्स और पुराना सामान जो इनके स्टोर्स में पड़ा है वो इन्होंने मेरे को प्रोवाइड किया उसको फिर इमेजिन करके कि कैसे इसको हम अच्छी तरह एक एक रोबोटिक स्कल्पचर के तौर पे बना सकते हैं तो फिर इमेजिनेशन के साथ इसको सारा बनाएंगे। Living a comfortable life, hundreds of Hindus every year come and reside in the holy city of Varanasi in their old age, hoping to die in the city, which they believe can break the ten-year cycle of death and rebirth and reach salvation. In India's northern city of Varanasi, Murli Mohan Shastri is waiting peacefully for death on the banks of the holy river Ganga. He hopes that by dying in Varanasi, he can break the tenuous cycle of death and rebirth, an article of faith for many Hindus, in order to attain salvation. The 82-year-old former college teacher and his wife left behind comfortable lives in the southern city of Hyderabad and now live in Mumukshu Bhavan, one of the Spartan community homes across the sacred city meant for those seeking to live out their twilight years there. Shastri says he has no interest in worldly comforts and wants to spend his final days immersed in study and prayer. Old age homes, they are for comfort, all right. But our Indian philosophy is, those who seek worldly comforts can never go to God, can never reach God. So, as far as possible, Mahiraki bolte, uh, renunciation. As far as possible, shun all these things. Don't go for them. Only Go only for God. According to Mumukshu Bhavan's manager, Manish Kumar Pandey, the campus has reached full capacity with over 80 residents. Although demand remains high for those who wish to settle down and die at the facility. Varanasi is home to over a million residents and is one of India's most popular destinations for both Hindu pilgrims and tourists. Adding to Varanasi's aura as an eternal city is the Mani Karnika Ghat, an ancient and iconic crematorium lying on the shores of the Ganga where pyres never run out. Even for those who are unable to take the last dying breath in Varanasi, devotees believe that being cremated in the city takes them one step closer to salvation. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.